Hi, it's Mike Bellevue. Today we're out at Duelist Den, and I'm going to cover a subject that's really for uh, new black powder shooters. Uh, and it's going to be how to load a cap and ball six gun. So I know I do a loading sequence in every cap and ball revolver video that I do, but it's been pointed out to me that a lot of new shooters are searching specifically for how to load and take care of their revolver rather than looking at specific revolver videos. So this one is just going to be about how to load your gun and get it out in action. And we'll be demonstrating it on an 1851 Navy revolver. Uh, but the concepts and techniques are pretty much universal for virtually any cap and ball revolver that you're likely to have. So let's get over to the bench and we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's get that gun loaded up. Right, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put it on half cock. That allows the uh, cylinder to spin freely so we can load it. Okay, then we're going to take our powder measure. And this is a 36 caliber. I'm going to use 20 grains of 3F Go X. Now, the way powder charges are designated in grains, that's a weight. It's not a volume. And I've got a blog post on my website that explains this in detail, so I'm not going to go through a whole lot of it today. But the idea is whoever made this measure up determined that that much space of black powder is going to weigh 20 grains, and nominally it should. Right? So we're talking about weight, but we're actually loading all the time by volume. We're using this measure. So we've got that with 20 grains of powder. I'm going to pour that right into the chamber. Right, make sure we got it all, and we do. Beautiful. All right, now I'm going to take a 375 inch diameter lead ball. I'm going to put that right on top. I'm going to rotate it until I can get it underneath this loading lever, and then I'm just going to press it home. Right, and there we go. Now I'm going to do that until I've loaded five chambers. I like to keep one empty for safety, but there's no real reason to. If you want to load six, you can. You have safety pins on this, and uh, they work just fine. So I'm going to load up the other chambers, and then I'll show you how we finish this off. All right, I'm going to show you two ways of lubricating the chambers. Uh, and the first way I'm going to show you is to use grease over the chamber mouths. That's how we're going to load the gun this time. Now, the purpose of that, some people think, is to stop chain fires. It's not. A tight-fitting ball is what stops the chain fires. The purpose of the grease is to provide lubrication to keep the fouling soft. Now, a lot of people, when they start off, use something like Crisco or shortening. Don't do that. It really works terrible. For one thing, if you're on a hot summer day, it'll melt as soon as you put it in the gun and just run right out. There'll be nothing left in there. Uh, it happens constantly. And it mixes with the fouling to form a real sludgy mess. It's just not a good lube. Now what I use is a homemade lube. I make this obviously myself. And it's made of two parts lamb's tallow and one part beeswax. Okay, so you might think that's more trouble than you want to go through and that's okay. Uh, I will tell you that half olive oil and half beeswax, you know, melt the beeswax, mix the olive oil in with that, let it set. That works great. And all we do with this, put some on a knife and spread it over the ends of the chambers. And that will provide lubrication for the ball as it goes down the barrel. And will help to keep the fouling soft and everything will be great. So we're going to lubricate up all five chambers that I just loaded. This lube that I make works pretty well at all temperatures. It's, it's barely above freezing today and yet it's still soft enough to use but it won't turn liquid in hot summer weather. It's got a pretty high melting point. And the lamp's tallow gives it a lot of lubricating qualities. So it's uh, quite good. I don't want to make a bloody mess but, but I might. I probably could have loaded this with 22 or 23 grains of powder. Uh, I like to use 20, but 
All right, so there we are. So we are all lubed up, except for our empty chamber, right? And now we can move on to the last step, which is capping. All right, so I'm gonna cap it with Remington number 10 caps. And uh, I'm gonna do this by hand just to show you. So we're just gonna take a little cap. And I'm gonna slide it right onto each nipple. It's as simple as that. So I'll just get them all done and then I'll show you the last step. All right, after I put a cap on each nipple, I like to make sure they are seated good and firmly. So I just take a wooden dowel and I just press them down to make sure each one is where it belongs. There we go. Okay, now for me, I bring it along and put the hammer down on an empty chamber. If you want to load all six, if you can see on your gun, there's a little pin right that fits in the slot on the hammer. You can load six safely by doing that. I prefer to just have an empty chamber. That's as safe as you can get. Okay, so let's go shoot it and have some fun. Well, now that you can see how we loaded the Navy, let's, uh, let's shoot it and make sure it goes bang. And it works. All right, now I'll show you another technique for lubing it. All right, so I'm going to take that same 20 grain powder charge, pour it into the chamber. All right, make sure we got it all. Now, instead of seating the ball directly on the powder, I'm going to seat it on this quarter inch thick lubricated felt wad. Now, I make these myself, but you can buy them from Oxyoke. I don't know if the packaging still looks like this or not. This is pretty old, but, uh, but they sell them. And it's my preferred way of doing it. Less messy than using lube. Loads clean, lubricates the barrel nicely, and then we just uh, ram it down, right? So there we are, all set. Now I'm gonna load five, and then we'll go shoot them. All right, the next uh, technique I want to show you is loading the gun with conical bullets. These are cast with an Erisgon uh, Colt conical ball mold. They're historically proper. This is, uh, this is a Civil War era bullet that Colt pioneered. And they were very popular back in the day. So we'll show you how to get those loaded. The process is very similar. We're going to take our go X powder. I'm going to use the same 20 grain load. So I'm going to fill a measure up with 20 grains. Guns on half cock. I'm going to pour in the powder. All right, now, right on top of the powder, I'm going to take the bullet. And it's, it's got a healed base so it'll fit right into the chamber and then stop where it's a little bit wider. That's what seals it. So I'm going to get it under the rammer and send it home and that's it. And so we're going to load five of those up and then we'll go see how they shoot. Okay, we've got the 51 Navy loaded up with conical bullets now. I'm just going to shoot the center target over there just to see how they do. So let's see.
okay. It does not get much better than that. All right, the next technique I want to show you is loading with paper cartridges. All right, so this, these are paper cartridges. Let me get some out here. <clears throat> so this is what they look like. The powder is encased in the paper. The paper is combustible. Uh, it's got a bullet glued to it, and then the bullet is dipped in hot lube, and everything is self-contained and ready to go. These were very popular during the Civil War. Uh, these are made with the cap and ball cartridge former. So uh, I'll put a link to it uh, in the description. But if you have not seen cap and ball's YouTube channel, he's a uh, Hungarian guy, Balzath Nemeth. And he's got the best black powder channel on YouTube, I think. So you got to check it out. It's cap and ball. Uh, just run it all together as one word. So anyway, he makes formers for making these paper cartridges. They're pretty easy. And I've got a number of videos on my channel on making paper cartridges. So I'm not going to go through those again today. But they're very simple to load. I mean, you can make a bunch of these up during the winter. And then when you get to the range in the spring, all you have to do is shoot. Right? So they just push in. You rotate them under the uh, loading lever. Right, get it lined up. There we go. Get it lined up and just push it right in. And there you go, all loaded. All right? Could not be easier. Uh, this is a bunch of junky paper and lube that gets pushed out, which you'll get a bunch of this. But it's really simple. So we're just going to do five of these. I'll pull another one out and show you. You just drop it right in, get the bullet underneath the rammer, get the rammer lined up with the uh, chamber, and just drive it in. There we go. All right, so we're going to get five of these loaded, and then we'll go shoot them, see how they do. So I'm loaded up with paper cartridges, and I'm just going to see if I can swing those plates around. All right, five for five. I'll take that. Okay, well, that's it. Now you know everything there is to know about how to load a cap and ball revolver and get out and start shooting it. If, uh, if you enjoyed the content in this video, and I hope you did, then give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider subscribing. There's a lot of great content on the channel, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. And if you're already a subscriber and you'd like to support us on Patreon, that would be very much appreciated. But if you can't, that's fine. We understand. Just keep on enjoying the videos. I'll see you next week.